my mask back on. I'll yield to <laughs> Congresswoman Jayapal. Thank you so much, Senator. Uh, so grateful for your tremendous leadership on this for quite some time now. And to my colleague in the House, we're thrilled to be working on this in partnership with the Senator. Uh, this is a moment where I think structural inequality and inequity has really been laid bare during this pandemic and this economic crisis. It is a moment where one in seven families don't have enough to eat. More than eight million people have been pushed into poverty. Nearly one million new people every week are filing unemployment claims. And that's on top of the more than 75 million who have lost their jobs. This historic loss of jobs has also, also led to a historic loss of health care. And all of this has happened as we've surpassed 512,000 deaths due to COVID. But as working families have struggled and as their savings have dried up and food banks have been overwhelmed, as the senator said, the rich have only gotten richer. U.S. billionaires have become $1.3 trillion richer since COVID began. That is a 44% jump in their wealth just since March. And it's not just a few billionaires getting wealthier. There have been 46 new billionaires created during this pandemic. Now, today, the richest 1% own 35% of the nation's wealth and the richest one-tenth of 1%. 1 that's 0.1% own more than 18% of America's wealth. And then just compare that to the entire bottom half of Americans owning just 1.5% of wealth. So in the simplest terms, there are the richest 130,000 families in America who hold nearly as much wealth as the bottom 117 million families combined. Now I wanna just spend a minute on black and brown and indigenous families and the racial wealth gap because this is really criti critical. It's particularly staggering when you look at racial inequality uh, as related to wealth. White families have an average wealth that is more than 14 times as much as black families and eight times as much as Latinx families. And in fact, the 400 richest Americans own more wealth than all, all black households and a quarter of Latino households combined. That's happening as one in three black and Latinx families have zero or negative wealth. And for Asian Americans, a group that is way too little studied, and there's way too little information here, in income and wealth distribution inequality has gone from being one of the most equal to actually one of the most unequal among major racial groups in the United States. Now, this is no accident. Our history is that much of the wealth of white families was accumulated at the expense of black, brown, and indigenous families, from legalized slavery to redlining. And the extreme inequality and concentration of wealth and racial inequity is baked into our tax system because we only tax income and wages and not wealth that has been amassed through business or equity or real estate, fine arts. And then we pass it down through inheritances, remaining free of taxes for the most part the whole time. So it's a wealth inequality level that no other leading country in the world has seen. Our legislation, as the Senator said, finally helps just level the playing field and ensures that the wealthiest begin to pay their fair share. And it does so all the while investing trillions of dollars into our communities. You already heard what it does, a 2% annual tax on those who have a net worth between 50 and a billion dollars, 50 million and a billion dollars. And yeah, you pitch in a little bit more if you've got more than a billion. But if you're like 99.95% of Americans who have a net worth of less than $50 million, you pay nothing new, not a penny. This tax only impacts 100,000 households, the top 0.05%. But still, it would bring in $3 trillion over 10 years. Just imagine what we could do with $3 trillion. That's COVID relief, it's healthcare, it's infrastructure, education, a transition to renewable energy and affordable housing, all the while reducing that racial wealth gap. And that's why ma the majority of Americans support an ultra-millionaire tax. Poll after poll has found that voters are with us on this, that it is time for the rich to pay their fair share. It's not just Democrats, it's moderates, it's independents, and even a plurality of Republicans. So I'm looking forward to working on this in the House with my colleagues and to bringing finally a fairness and an equity 
to our system. Thank you, and I yield now to the great gentleman from the state of Pennsylvania. I just wanted to add something in terms of people paying a, a wealth tax now. Brendan mentioned real estate, but also when you die, your estate is valued, and you have to pay taxes at that point. So it's not like we don't already have this. We already are doing this. We just happen to be giving a lot of people a big break all along the way where they're accumulating more and more wealth which is, again, why these inheritances, as they're passed down, actually impact a smaller and smaller group of people, largely white, because that's where the wealth was to start with. You don't have to pay any tax on it until you transfer it. And so I don't think, I mean, I think that there's a lot of reasons why this stands up constitutionally. Yeah.